this debate that I think has gained some steam publicly, but I think has been percolating longer within NFL scouting departments about who the best wide receiver in this year's class is. And I want to make something clear at the outset. Ultimately, who is the first wide receiver taken is decided by one team. But that is not to say that the first wide receiver taken in the draft is the majority favorite in scouting circles because we just don't know exactly how many teams prefer Marvin Harrison Jr. versus Malik Neighbors. Let me start here, though, Mel. Obviously, we know how you feel about Marvin Harrison Jr. Do you think it's even a conversation in your eyes between Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors? You know, I think it's it's a uh, debate rages on, I think, in terms of you know, Odunze and Neighbors feel because that's forgotten here. We act like it's Neighbors or Harrison. Odunze and Neighbors was kind of a 50-50 split. Now, things change as you get closer to the draft. All the information's in. We get all that. But these three are all very highly regarded. I think you go back. We've had drafts like this, okay? You have Michael Irvin draft, Timmy Brown draft, Sterling Sharp, you know, uh, Jerry Rice. You know, I think all the, the receivers were in those drafts, three of them, and each one of those drafts were out saying, you can put them in a hat, pick one, you're, gonna, you're not going to go wrong. I think that's the case with these three, really. Depends what you're looking for. In Malik yeah. Neighbors' case, he is explosive. He did have a great year. There's no question. He did put it all together this season. Odunze. He is silky smooth. He is reliable. He is consistent. He is the catch radius guy, the contested catch guy. Throw it up. He'll go get it. And then Marvin Harrison Jr., what's not to like? I don't don't really get, Field. Maybe you can explain it to me. Where's the, I wouldn't say negativity. Where's the question coming in on Marvin Harrison Jr. as to why he isn't wide receiver one guaranteed? What, What am I missing on that? There is nothing that you're missing now. I think anybody that has a feeling that Malik Neighbors is superior to Marvin Harrison is making that case not because of anything that Marvin Harrison doesn't bring to the table, but rather the stuff that Malik Neighbors does bring to the table. And I think that's something that I've learned, Mel, in my you know relatively short tenure covering the draft and sort of a full-time capacity, is that when you're comparing two players and you say that player X is ahead of player Y, people infer that to mean that you have big slights against player Y. If you ask me what my problem is with Marvin Harrison Jr., if I were to make the Malik Neighbors case, I would have zero ability to come up with anything. You want size? He's got size. You want speed? He's got speed. I don't care if he doesn't have a timed speed. We know that he is plenty fast. If you want reliable hands, we've got that. You want contested catches? We've got that. Run after catch, body control, you name it. Marvin Harrison Jr. is a total package. But if you're a team that prioritizes run-after-catch skills, there might be some. There are some, I should say, within the NFL that say, hey, Malik Neighbors is the best run-after-catch wide receiver in this entire draft class because while he, like Marvin Harrison Jr., has not yet had a timed 40 uh, during this pre-draft process, he was the most explosive player that I studied on tape from this past fall here, Mel. But it seems like both of us are in agreement. While you and I both have Marvin Harrison – ranked ahead of Malik Neighbors. We understand where the conversation is deriving from surrounding both of those two, and also Roma Dunze, who somehow has become the forgotten man of these three wide receivers. Yeah, and this is what you get in the draft field. As we get closer to late April in the draft, everybody, this this quarterback's the best. In the, you know, somebody says something, we got 32 teams. The only team matters is a team with those picks. So right. we're talking to guys in the league too, and they might say, no, my best Running back is this guy. My best off-ball linebacker is this guy. My best safety is this guy. But does it really matter when you're trying to do a mock and your ratings? Our ratings are based on what we believe. So we don't really care what anybody else thinks. Our mock draft is based on what people are telling us. So they're completely different things. I go try to build a consensus. Who was throwing the ball to Marvin Harrison Jr. this past year? It was Kyle McCord. McCord, Where's Kyle McCord? He's not a Buckeye anymore, right? Moved on to Syracuse. You go to Jane Daniels with Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr., who, oh, by the way, Brian Thomas Jr. had one heck of a year as well. Averaged 17 yards a catch with 17 touchdowns. Who did was throwing the ball to Romo Dunze? Michael Penix Jr. was. They have a couple other receivers going to get drafted, and and Jalen McMillan and also Jalen Polk. So I think you have to look at it and put it all in perspective. Marvin Harrison Jr., I don't care about all this stuff. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. Guess what? Adapt, right? Adapt. What did Billy Bean say in Moneyball? Adapt or die, right? Right. That's right. Yeah. When Christian McCaffrey didn't play in his bowl game, let's knock him down the board. How'd that would have worked out? Okay? So he started that trend. Now it's adapt. Guys are going to say, after all this, I played a season, my body's beat up, 
I'm a little tired. I don't want to participate in all this stuff. I don't want to do a yeah. lot of this stuff. Okay, yeah. we had players get hurt. Remember Andrew Voorhees last year to guard? Of course, yeah. Torres ACL. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's going to be starting guard for the Baltimore Ravens this year, but he had to have a medical red shirt. I understand injuries can happen in a pickup basketball game. Like, you can tear an Achilles there. Things can happen in anything. But once the season's over, how you handle those months leading up to the draft, Everybody's going to deal with it differently moving forward. Okay. Totally. And adapt to it. Adapt to it. We have NIL. We got players in commercials now making a ton of money where to get into the NFL. Eric, the whole landscape of everything college football, the NFL draft, everything has changed dramatically. You got to adapt to it. If you don't, you're going to be left behind. So, Mel, I will say this. I think we can leave the Malik Neighbors versus Marvin Harrison Jr. We think this is like, you know, a 99 and a 98 on this sort of metaphorical grade scale, right? These are two of the best players in the draft. They're two of my four highest rated prospects overall. And you have them both inside, I believe, your top six. So, I mean, we're talking about two elite prospects. The last thing I'll say, though, about Marvin Harrison Jr. in the pre-draft process is hearing from people in the league that have heard Marvin Harrison Jr.'s side of the story, if you will, have described it not that Marvin Harrison Jr. has been disrespectful to the process and that he just sort of turned his nose up to the pre-draft process, but rather that, like, he put a lot of thought into this decision and has actually had a very cogent mindset to explain why he said, what more do you need to see from me? You have my verified measurables in terms of my height and weight and length at the combine, but if you don't think that I'm fast and powerful and explosive, then you're not a very good scout. I think that much we can all agree on. If you need more numbers to support your Marvin Harrison Jr. case, then you are watching the wrong film. Mm -hmm. Let's get to our spotlight stuff here now, though, Mel, because you and I wanted to rip through a bunch of players and – we're going to go offense and then defense. Uh, as I said earlier in the show, some of these guys are going to be players that could hear their name in the first round. Some of these guys might hear their names in round six or seven, but let's get to it, 